I uh, got a lot of responses back from the last video about what you guys wanted to see. So figure I'd jump back in, in, into Notion again. Uh, today what we're gonna focus on is a custom note-taking system I created called Notation. Um, but to understand Notation, I'm gonna have to give you a good overview of essentially my Notion workspace, which is called Exigence, how it works. And then you'll understand why I created Notation the way I did. So let's go ahead and hop into it real quick. So this is the Exigent system design. I actually got a, an idea from Austin Bradley. He is a, a huge Notioner influencer on YouTube. I also check out Thomas Frank and Danny Hatcher. So the way that I live my life is I have a, a funnel, right? And within this funnel, I may take on different work, but what I really want to focus on is if these tasks or these external projects that I'm encountering, do they really align with my schema, core values, my value goals, the outcomes of those goals, and then should I be creating various projects and action items? And if you notice here to the right, I'm tracking every single one of those. There's daily tracking. Uh, we'll, we'll cover that in a different video. I actually do sprint planning on myself, so I'll show you what my last week's sprint planning looked like. Uh, monthly reviews, quarter reviews, and annual reviews, so I can kind of have that, that 52 week type of viewpoint when I want to go back and evaluate how well I was doing on something. And like I said, I work out, I mostly out of the, the daily action zone. So I focus on what I'm doing today, this week. And this essentially is all integrated to the, the small business me and my colleague is running called Think Champ. We're gonna get that launched sometime, maybe towards the end of the year, next year. I have an open source intelligence dashboard performance management to manage myself both cognitively and also from uh, psychology and mnemonic perspective make sure that i'm improving my memory and the anchors that i'm using we then have a health dashboard and the health dashboard is used to measure fitness activity so you can have apis that you also pull into notion right so i have a withing scale that i want to be able to track my data as far as like how much muscle am i losing how much fat is, am i losing as well as my steps you can pull that in here then I have a home and family dashboard that I want to track like projects that I do with my wife. There's a lot of improvements and things we want to do like, you know, adding more stuff to the deck or, you know, redoing the floor, things of that nature. And I like to get her as involved as possible too. It just makes it a better experience for everybody. But the biggest thing I want you guys to focus on down here is the synthesis tag database. And so the synthesis tag database ties everything together. So think of it as just like a, a tag that you would apply to something, like something is related to psychology, something is related to cybersecurity or composition or something like that. And so it allows me to quickly pull in data from other relevant databases. But I wanted to show you that before I hop into it. All right, so now that that's over, we're gonna go ahead and hop into notation. All right, here is notation. This is my custom take on OneNote. I derived this idea once again from Danny Hatcher as well as Thomas Frank, but I've made a lot of modifications and turned this into my own. And so for the first section, if you're big into OneNote or Evernote, you gotta have a quick note session, right? So you, you would come in here, take your notes really quick. They're not really assigned to a section or a notebook, but you just need to jot down something. Um, I have my own templates here. I can have a, a new note template, which essentially We'll create a title. It will say what book is it going to be related to. I can do it that way. Uh, another way too. We can just go ahead and delete, delete this. So I want to show you another cool way. I could have a new idea or random thought. And what this did is like if I'm walking around the kitchen or chatting with someone and someone has a really good idea, I want to jot it down really quick and I want this to go into what we call my think vault. I'll show that at the end, but. Some things I may not want to act on right now, but I don't want to forget them. And I'll show you what's really cool about that think vault a little bit later. Now also, the way the hierarchy works is that you have the notebooks that is a database of its own. You have the sections, which is a database of its own, and then you have the pages. And so everything sits inside the notebook, so you create a, a relational database. And there, through Danny Hatcher, if you don't want to create this on your own, you can use his template. I am a builder, so I like creating my own stuff. Another cool thing down here is something called whiteboard. And so with whiteboard, essentially what you can do is if you want to take notes really quickly in the class or something like that, you could, and it would automatically pop up here into um, into my into Notion. 
So I'm actually pulling this up on my phone really quick. So give me a second. Let me see if I can replicate this. So essentially what I could do with this, I could go to this little profile, start typing on it or start writing and it will automatically show up in here. And that's pretty cool if you want to take notes on the fly. The other thing is that I have an embedded Merriam-Webster dictionary. You can embed almost any website that's compatible with it, but instead of me going out, I can run a quick search on keywords and so forth. But definitely check out whiteboard, that's spelled W-I-T-E-B-O-A-R-D.com. All right, so let's actually give you an example of one of the notebooks. So we'll hop in here. What you're seeing is, is a database, but the view that I have set is in the gallery view. It's just a lot more appeasing, right? A lot more engaged and immersive. You're always happy every time you come into this versus just looking at a notebook that has absolutely no swag, right? And so I'm always happy using this. Now, I'll show you an example of a few, a few of these. Let's take a look at the communication science one. So what's cool about this, if you notice, you see all these little related items. This is from my literature archive. This is essentially my virtual library. I think it's maybe over 700, 800 books in there, but they're all codified with certain tags. Like some of them belong to discourse analysis, Socratic inquiry. So the way that the notebook is configured, it's tied in with everything else in the workspace, right? So if you notice here, I want you to pay attention to the literature archive, what happens. If I start taking away these tags, then those relevant books then go away. There's nothing there. You'll also notice that there's no training associated with it now. But if I start putting it back one by one, discipline thinking, this is basically its own take on critical thinking. Here are all the books that are related to it. Here are the courses that are related to it. I have a whole training providers uh, database and platform and we'll do in a future, future discussion. I just put in personality theory. And personality theory just pulled up one from Jordan B. Peterson as well as Belbin and Center for Applied Rationality. And then Socratic Inquiry, and then lastly, Discourse Analysis. Now, why do I have it configured this way? Well, you gotta remember how the brain works, right? There's a lot of neurons, axons, and there's that soma, but you gotta create more cognitive hooks so you don't have to think about where things are. And so that's why you, when you build this out, really thinking about creating that one holistic tag database so you can link all of your data together. And so essentially in here, you know, I just got the, the name of the notebook, the sections, the pages. And if I keep going down here, you'll see uh, that the sections are put out this way. And what's cool is, you know, I create my own views. Are these things urgent? Do I want to see it in a, in a Kanban board style where, hey, I want to mark some from no status to urgent to active. You know, it's a very amenable and flexible system. And this is one thing I, I really like about Notion. Let's do an example of two more. Let's try LRG. So I am a nerd, <laughs> but LRG stands for Logic, Rhetoric, and Grammar. I am, if I didn't get into cybersecurity or cyber psychology, I would have definitely been in law school for sure. But what I liked about law school was there was a practice called forensic debate or forensic analysis. And that is about breaking someone's arguments using Socratic inquiry and so forth, right? So I practice this entire modality when I'm speaking, when I'm negotiating, when I'm defending my dissertation, and even when I'm presenting. And it's the same thing here. So, you know, I have various training providers, various books, but they're all being pulled in based on the tags that are in here. So if I add in another tag that is relevant to memory, it's going to bring in all the memory books as well. Same makeup here, you know, I have some about logical fallacies, creating arguments, different resources and websites, and what have you. Let's find two more. This is my favorite one though, so, uh, because my philosophy is there is no knowledge without memory, and so the best way to become more knowledgeable is to optimize your memory. And so, I conduct research in this area, I also read a lot of different monographs, and a lot of different novels on this as well, as well as just the different podcasts. Um, and what's cool about this one podcast with the solution, anytime I press the back button in my car while listening to it, it will record the past 30 seconds of it, take it, annotate it, and it will put it right in here in the Notion. So 
a very awesome tool here. And essentially, same makeup here. You know, I've got memory sites and resources and different tabs here. So I'm gonna go to one of my favorite notebooks and we'll start wrapping up here. This is my research keystone notebook. So what I particularly, I would say specializes in the theoretical conceptual frameworks. I won't go into detail. Maybe we'll hold that for another, another video, but essentially I want to be able to associate all of the training providers that have to do with research all of the books that are going to help me learn more about it instead of just you know using other dissertations as templates let me teach myself how the dissertation is constructed let me teach myself how the article is actually constructed and so when i'm taking notes here and i'm thinking about what type of books would be nice they're all right here i don't have to go look for them and that's extremely helpful now there's one thing i want to show you here that is very very awesome about notion since notion the whole purpose is to be integrated and to synthesize with anything. I also have a research database. And so with that research database, it's called, it's called the Research Archive. I would say, based on the name of this notebook, I think the two things are related, right? So if they're related, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna create a relationship between them. I'm just gonna say at, and I'm gonna say Research Archive. And you notice here, I have the actual page then I have the database. We're gonna link the page real quick. So watch this, this is pretty cool. Now if I go directly into Research Archive, here is that entire workspace dedicated to scientific research. This basically talks about the structure of it, what's going to be in here, the hierarchy, how I organize literature resources, the role of the scientists, as well as the Hippocratic Oath and so forth. But what's awesome about this, and what we won't go into to too much detail, this essentially organizes every tool, platform, coding, references, citation checkers, all in this backend database here. And then what I do is I just carve these up into different tools that I'm going to use. Specifically, what I use out of here are my research databases. So if I'm actually looking for something, this is where I'm going to come and go find everything. Um, and what's awesome about it, if I go right back up here, you notice that I now have a backlink. With that backlink, now I can go right back to the research keystone and I'm right back where I started. So that is the, the awesome thing about creating your own note-taking system because you don't have any limitations. You're not really worried about anything. And lastly, what we'll close up with is, remember I was talking about the two different note types I had, just a regular note and then a thought. So what happens with this is when I come into here, let's say I have a new random idea or thought and say I wanted to create a quick video for LinkedIn, something like that, right? And the reason why I have these two things, what is your thought idea, but what made you think of it? Because cognitively, you remember things based on contextual awareness, where you are and what you were doing, and that just improves your recall. And so I would type in something like, you know, create a video about notation. What made you think about it? I was using OneNote and remembered how much I don't like using OneNote. Something like that, you know, you want to try to make it as memorable as possible. But what brings this into Think Vault is when I change this status here. So if I change it to urgent, you notice back here, it disappeared. Let me show you that one more time. Let's see here. That's where we'll just go ahead and jump to the Think Vault. But if I didn't have it as urgent, it would just stay right here. So where this goes is a place called the Think Vault. And here's the Think Vault here. So within this, I just try to make it as fun as possible. Big purple metal vault with all of my ideas in here, right? And so here, there's that create a quick uh, video to LinkedIn. I guess I need to spell a little bit better, but you, you get the gist, right? And so there's some in here and it basically sorts about the dates. So when I don't have any tasks or projects or action items, this may be what I come back to. You know, there is one about creating a memory project and de de developing several loci. Uh, loci is for your memory palaces for you guys who are pretty up on, up on memory techniques. 
but I can look in here really quickly here and say, okay, what was the thought? It says I need to create a MIMI project that de develops specific loci for people, events, and training. What was I doing? I was performing my regular routine and going through my ReadWise annotation. Yeah, I mean, that's pretty cool, right? Uh, but yeah, you sometimes you hear those pretty cool ideas when you're speaking with someone and you wanna note it down really quick, have a think vault. But yeah, this is pretty much all I have for today. We went over notation. We went over the structure of exigence. We talked about how it works. You guys, I am me, put up any comments about what you want to see next and we'll just keep this thing moving. All right, y'all, y'all have a great day. Bye.